So quick overview. Um, so starting with this testing module, we're going to cover some of the basic concepts of testing uh, using Postman. And then we want to move into some more advanced techniques and functionality that Postman has to offer. Uh, all this will include demos as well as practical hands-on exercises just to get, to get you familiar with these techniques. So what the hell is API testing? So basically, people have the tendency to think that they need to have a different set of skills to do API testing. That is not true. Um, you're still using the same techniques as you would if you were testing anything else, but uh, the context has changed. And Danny, I don't know, you may want to... Yeah, to me, it's just a change in mindset. So you can apply the same things that you, you would do, all the, all the practices, all the techniques you know from testing before on different applications, different web applications maybe. But it's just um, it's a change in direction. And it's just uh, highlighting things you don't know. And there's different aspects of uh, different APIs which are important to test. And um, it, it, can, uh, it can be daunting to start with. So a lot of people with a lot of experience, they get given an API to test. They're like, oh my god, I don't know what to do. And um, it, for me, it's just completely the same. But you're just changing the context of what you're doing. Okay, cool. Yeah, sure. Sweet. Okay? Good. Yeah. You good? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> Do you want this? Okay, good. All right. So, why write API tests? So, why do we write API tests? This is basically what we're doing is we're checking the application to, meet, to make sure that it meets the criteria such as functionality, reliability, uh, performance and security, things along those lines. As a result, we ensure that the application meets the quality standards we set out for our APIs. One of the main benefits of API testing is that it tends to be more robust and easier than other types of testing, uh, such as like GUI testing and things like that. Scripts. So this is a very key area. So scripts unlock a lot of the power of Postman. So they allow you to create, manipulate, and validate your data. They also leverage Node.js runtime uh, to make your request more dynamic. And you can also execute plain JavaScript in the pre-request and test tab, which I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with. Uh, so we want to talk a little bit about the order uh, of execution when it comes to scripts. So the basic flow of things for a request go, uh, the pre-request script executes, then your request itself, you get your response back from your API, and finally the request test script executes at the end of it. Uh, collections and folder scripts. So these are basically taking on uh, the pre-request scripts and the test scripts, and we're moving up a level. Um, so they can be updated in the collection folder uh, and the, the details uh, respectively. Test scripts can be added to a collection, a folder, and not only a single request within a collection. Uh, similar to what we've talked about uh, previously, the execution order of uh, test scripts associated with a collection, they'll run after every request in the collection. The same applies for the folder scripts. So let's talk a little bit about pre-request scripts. So these can execute uh, before the requests. They can also be used in various parts of the request itself, so maybe it's used in the URL. Um, also, it could be used in the body, things like that. And they can also be added not only at the request level, but as mentioned before, at the folder and collection levels as well. And we'll just want to kind of show a little bit like the pre-request script execution. As you can see, it'll execute uh, any collection level pre-request scripts followed by folder level uh, pre-request scripts, and finally the pre-request itself uh, for the request. And all this happens obviously before the request is executed. So let's do a little practical hands-on exercise. Hopefully um, everything worked out and everybody was able to import things. So let's walk through the steps. Hopefully these will transition and look fine on the screens for everybody. So I hope everybody has the Postman app launched now because we did the imports. Uh, if you don't, just make sure you open it up if you happen to close it down. So let's create, this, uh, create a new request. So click on the new button. We'll select request um, from that new modal screen that pops up. And let's enter a request name. It doesn't have to be what we have on there, but feel free. 
And we're going to create a collection and enter a name here. So as you can see on the screen, down below, um, you put in whatever you want for the name and click the little orange check mark next to it. And if I'm going too fast, just raise your hands, let me know. Or too slow. Or too slow, yeah. We want to enter this URL. Uh, I don't know how well everybody can see this. Uh, I don't know if, That's great. if our guys can work through magic and maybe uh, update that URL as well so it's a little easier to see. But basically, it's HTTPS colon backslash backslash postman dash echo dot com slash get. If anybody's familiar with the Postman Echo um, collections, this may be old news to them. And if you've done that, you can go ahead and hit send. Postman dash echo. Dot com slash get. If you hit send after you've entered that in, hopefully everybody was able to get that entered. You'll see what the result looks like. It should look something very similar to that. Oh, perfect, so they have updated the slide, so hopefully that's easier for everybody to read. Although now I think it throws our slides out of whack here. Okay, there we go. Next we're gonna have to create an environment so we want to click on the little gear icon at the top, right next to where it says, and uh, I probably will say no environment unless you have one already existing from previous work you may have done. We're going to click on the add button. After you click on that gear icon, you'll see this, uh, this manage environments mode will come up. Enter a name and just click add. Put anything you want in there. Feel free to follow what we have up here. Then once you've done that, you should have one environment or more if you have uh, ones already uh, pre-populated in there. Just make sure you select the one that you just created in that dropdown. Is everybody good? Am I going too fast? Too slow? Go back. Like say, if you have any problems or anything, just raise your hand. How do we feel about this, guys? Thumbs up? Yeah, I see yeah. one thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay, I'm seeing less thumbs up. Good. So next, we are going to select the pre-request scripts tab from this newly created request. And hopefully that's a little easier to see for everybody. Um, can everybody see this up here? It's not a hyperlink, so it might be a little easier to see. It's a different shade of blue. Basically, it's pm.environment.set, and then uh, your brackets, and then quote date time, comma, new space date function. Basically, what this is here is just a simple uh, JavaScript method. And what we're doing is we're creating a new date and putting it into a date time variable and setting it for that environment that we just created. Uh, I don't know if we can really increase the... Okay, is that okay? That, that sure, better? Sure. Thank you. Next year we'll get everybody glasses. <laughs> or we'll make our slides bigger. I guess if I take my glasses off, it doesn't look that great either. Or we'll make it easier. Or we won't be here. 
Or we just won't be here, because we would really have tanked this. Uh, so next, uh, we want to select the parameters tab in the request. to be the first tab in there. And once again, hopefully that is easy to see. But we basically want to put date as the, f the first parameter. And then we want to put date time and uh, the curly braces. I don't know if the screenshot's uh, any better for reading as well, but. How's everyone getting on? Are they up to where we need to be? Yeah, cool. Out the back. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Nice, cool. Awesome. Let's go. I like it. And hit send. Hit send. Ta-da. Really kind of blows your mind, doesn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> right? So, so what, yeah, so on the screen, uh, you can see maybe, no, you, you can look at the different screens. So what you're going to see now is similar to the first request, but this time, because we've added that um, environment variable, we've now populated the uh, date uh, property, the key uh, in the args for the uh, params. So hopefully everyone can see that, and everyone can see that, that working uh, in a way that the pre-request has done its business, it's set that date, uh, and then we've, uh, we've populated that URL with that date. Yeah. Did that work for most people? If they were able to see everything okay on the screens, I see a lot of people nodding their heads, so hopefully that worked for everybody. So next, let's move on to test scripts. So very similar to the pre-request uh, scripts. Uh, come our notes aren't moving forward here. There we go, thanks guys. So as we mentioned before, this is just basically JavaScript code that's executed in the test uh, tab. Uh, they run in a sandbox environment, so it's not the same as the application's uh, execution environment. And you can also use uh, snippets. Make sure it doesn't die on me. Um, so you can also use snippets to quickly build some common tests, uh, and the sides of these things will show uh, there are quick snippets you can use. As well, you can run uh, and add as many tests as needed, depending on how many things you want to test uh, for specifically. Postman will run these tests uh, after you execute your request every time. And I apologize, some of this may be like kind of old news for everybody, but we want to make sure that we cover the basics uh, for everybody so nobody was kind of left behind. So hopefully uh, it's not too boring for everybody. So as far as the test script execution goes, here you can see uh, the flow on this diagram here. So similar to what we saw in the pre-request execution, once a response is received, then we execute any collection level tests followed by folder level, and lastly, the request level tests. Here we go. So we will do yet another practical hands-on exercise. This time around, test scripts. Hope this will be uh, legible for everybody as well. Uh, the screenshots, I think, are probably pretty easy to see from all the monitors and stuff. But we, so we want to select the test tab this time, so the pre-request tab. And then from the snippets menu on the right-hand side, scroll until you find the snippet called status code, code is 200, and click on it. And when you do that, you should actually see it populate uh, pm.test, and so status code is 200 function, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then we want to add another one, so scroll until you find the one that says response time is less than 200 milliseconds. It's another snippet as well. And select it, and it'll populate that in there as well, hopefully right below um, the current one. Has everyone got to that point? <clears throat> I'm going to leave one pretty high. Yeah. No? Get Ryan talks a lot. Do you need help? Oh, cool. Yes, I have got to that point, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so we want to demonstrate if this is a pass and fail. So we want to tweak the test just a little bit because I just want to have you guys see what it looks like both ways. What? What? Okay. So we want to edit it um, from 200 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds, and you can update um, both the. Next break. We can just put oh, the link to the slide. Advancing on me here. You can uh, update both the request itself and the title for the test, and then hit send. Once 
Once you've hit send, you can select the test results tab. And hopefully you will see both a pass and a fail. Um, we had run through this multiple times, and in some cases both of them would, uh, would have passed. Um, but I think we were kind of banking on the fact that our uh, Postman Echo system was not going to be quite so performant, but in some cases it will. We're kind of hoping everybody will just kind of hit it at the same time and uh, you'll actually see a failure as well. But if you don't, it's good for us because that means our Postman Echo system is uh, being very performant. Um, but we just kind of wanted to try and mix it up so you can see both a pass and a fail in here. So next what we want to do is we want to take these tests that we put in the request itself and we want to move it up to the collection level. So we want to show the power um, of places like uh, where you'd have repetition and things like that happening in your scripts. Uh, maybe you need to create like a new value for your request, like a timestamp. Uh, perhaps you do the same test on every call uh, in your collection or in a folder. Uh, such as like checking the performance that it's you know 100 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds and so on. Uh, in these cases, we want to just remove that replication that's happening on each and every request and move it up a level uh, to either the folder if they are collections put together in folders, or if you have just the collection itself with all your requests in one place. Uh, so let's begin. So highlight and cut the tests from the request. And as soon as you've highlighted and cut those tests, hit save. And the reason for this is we want to make sure it saves the new state where it knows that these tests have been removed. Otherwise, they will still be there if we don't save the changes. Uh, it's kind of noted if you don't save uh, your changes, like a little orange dot that'll uh, be on the title of the tab itself. So once you've saved it, that orange dot will go away and you'll just have the regular X for closing. Now we want to go and we want to select um, that collection that you created in one of the earlier steps. So I think, you know, if everybody followed kind of like what we had here, it's post slash con collection. But like I say, you would have named it uh, maybe something different. And you want to click on edit. So you click the little uh, ellipses next to uh, the name of the collection itself and hit edit. After you've done that, you're going to have this edit collection modal window that's going to pop up. And we want to click on the test tab. Similar to what it looks like when you're, uh, you're working on a request, you know, you'll see that you have like the pre-request uh, scripts tab, test tab, and things like that. So we want to select tests. And we want to paste those tests that you just cut from the request itself in here. And then click update. So it should look similar to what we have up here in a screenshot in the edit collection modal. Can we pause? What's that? Can we make sure everyone's up to that point? Yeah. Is everybody good here? Is that one good? Too fast again. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thumbs like, up. Like the thumbs up. Like the thumbs up. We should just do this all the time. I like this. Yeah. See a thumbs up. This works so much better. And once you've done that, you can go back to your request, hit send, and you'll see that the same tests ran, even though the tests don't reside in the request anymore. They've been moved up to the collection level. So that kind of shows you the power of how that works. So basically, any uh, request that you have in that collection, or like I say, if you had a folder and you put everything in a folder, those tests are going to execute against uh, everything in that folder or collection. So like I say, this has been something I've used a lot in the past because uh, there'd be a lot of replication in my test, things that I want to check for, especially if there's things that are very similar. Um, so it kind of keeps our code dry, which is something I think um, is mentioned in one of our other talks. Uh, basically, like we don't repeat ourselves, so we're not having the same code in multiple places. We only have to make the change once, which is very nice. And in here, like our tests can be as uh, simple and compl or as complex as you want them to be, because you can just write basic JavaScript in here as well. But we will kind of talk about um, how you can extend some of this functionality and advanced techniques a little further on. 